want to stay just for a moment on the Tony Vitello situation. And I ask you, is it over? Is this done? Caleb, I can't tell you 110% done based off the phone calls and people I talked to yesterday, but I got no indication whatsoever that this is some sort of thing that could linger on like the Bruce Pearl situation. So I'm going to say right now that it is over that whatever happened, let's, we can assume if we want to, that it's linked to Huna, maybe it's not, but either way, I was led to believe that it is over and this is a dead issue. I'm going to say this issue specifically is over. I don't think Tony Vitello is done getting in trouble with the NCAA or SEC or the school, whatever you want to name him. I mean, that was his third. Uh, Caleb Jaru has a piece out. You guys all got to go read it on Off the Hooks. Ja- off the Hooks Sports. Jaru does a great job with us. He does a lot of our baseball coverage along with recruiting coverage. And he's got a piece up right now on just – Vitello's history of suspensions. So he ain't done getting suspended. I'm going to tell you all that right now. <laughs> well, that actually leads us to four downs. And it's brought to you by Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. They fix my eyes. I can see far away like an eagle. They are fantastic. And they're local. Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han right there in Knoxville, whether it's LASIK surgery like I had or you want to deal with uh, cataracts. Remember, Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han. And they've also got great vision centers just for your regular checkups. It is time for Four Downs, and it's brought to you by Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. Four Downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Downs. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. A first down, any more NCAA issues for Tony Vitello as long as he's the head coach at Tennessee? Yes. He might do it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't really have a problem with it. These minor issues, these sorts of things, you have to have a huge pile of those before they are significant. So I'll say, yeah, he's going to have slight NCAA issues. Josh Heupel is going to have slight NCAA issues. It's not like NASCAR where if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, but it's fairly close. You want to toe the line. And the bottom line is the rules are so much more loose than they used to be. I mean, you really have to push it to even cross the lines. But will he have uh, more NCAA issues? Yeah, I think almost any successful coach will. Second down, as we talk about Vitello possibly changing a bit and changing his coaching style, Will we see any more one finger salutes running around second base, which I think that most people would agree weigh in on the message board. I think most people would agree that that was the one really egregious celebration that went over the top. It was caught on the camera. It was played over and over and over. So the bird, will it remain moving forward? Uh, I don't think it, I don't think that's going to remain. Uh, and the only reason I think Tony Vitello is going to cut down on it is he's he doesn't mind the brashness, but I will say that like he's gotten it to a point to where look, if the NCAA can make an example out of somebody where they have legal or where they have they're within their rights to come down really hard on a coach, it'll be Tony Vitello. I think those are gone. I think the days of those are over. I think it was a group that fed into its brashness, a special group. Some of that's good. Some of that's bad last year. But I don't think you're going to see the one finger salutes. I don't think you're you're going to see anybody flipping the bird going around the um, going around second base. I, I think you're going to see that dialed down, which leads me to third down bumping umpires, be it him or one of his assistant coaches. Is that over, yay or nay? Yes, and I, I'm going to say this up front. It's, up, it's over because I think somebody in the SEC sat down with Tony Vitello, and he got lucky that he only got a three-game suspension for that, a four-game suspension for it last year. I think if you make contact with an umpire or a ref, I mean, that's borderline suspend for the whole year, honestly, because that's a horrible offense to me. Yeah, I think that's done too. Celebrations in general, fourth down, will they continue under Tony Vitello? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. And I got no problem with that. Please hit that like button. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate you hit that like button. It helps us open it up to uh, more viewers. I, I just, uh, the, the fine line to me 
is is pretty simple. And I, it is do the celebration in the dugout. If you bat flip it, it doesn't need to go over your head. Okay, which I have no problem with the bat flip. If you ever watch uh, Japanese baseball, their their major leagues, I mean that's part of the celebration, and it's kind of cool. Um, but until that changes in the United States, the bat flip thing needs to be lower than your shoulders, no more one finger salutes, and celebrations are just fine by me. I got zero problem with it whatsoever. It just there needs to be some sort of line you in the sand that you can't cross or you don't cross. And I think that's the the next the big bat step. flip though? I mean, like this, I'm sorry, but worrying about a bat flip, this is why baseball has fallen behind football and basketball in popularity in America, among other things, is, I mean, this would be like, again, we act like that we're so angry about bat flips. In 1933, whatever, Babe Ruth called a shot, you know, and so was that not classless and trash talk back then? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I think baseball is way too purist sometimes getting mad at the bat flip. No, I mean, but you know, I mean, there has to be a line at some point. You don't want to flip it 30 feet in the air, right? No, okay, yes, but like over the shoulder, like if you swing the bat and you hold the bat up here and then you drop it, I mean, like, come on, come on, let it happen. My favorite player was King Griffey Jr. growing up. Griffey always had a tendency to admire his shot after he hit a home run. If he knew it was gone, he would look at it for a couple of seconds before rounding the bases. <laughs> Some of the rules are so incredibly stupid in baseball, the gentleman's rules, and watching your shot and getting beamed the next time in which you can I – mean, you could potentially kill somebody. I mean, we're talking about a you know 95-mile-an-hour pitch. Some of the rules in baseball are so stupid, and that's why I really enjoyed this baseball team last year is I thought they pushed – maybe pushed a little bit too far, but they pushed, and I liked it. Yeah, that's why I'm pro-charging the mound. I'm sorry, if a pitcher can hit you with a baseball – you should be allowed to charge them out and, and beat the H out of them at the same time. So, Are you pro-charging the mound? I don't think you should get suspended if a pitcher hits you with the baseball and then you charge the mound. I, I don't. That's been my – particularly now with the DH rule in both leagues, both leagues have DHs, pitchers are protected. You never even get to hit them now. That's a great point. Uh, that's a great point. But the bat flipping, I think the only part we differ on is the bat flipping height. And I, I would just say not over your head, not more than two revolutions. <laughs> I'm making this a little bit silly, but you know, I mean, what is too far, right? If the bat goes 15 feet in the air and it's flipped 30 times, you know, that's too far, right? Okay, fine. Or you have no problem Whatever. with it? Whatever. I, I think that's a way to inject some life into baseball. Honestly, look, major league Major League Baseball was staying afloat because of local markets, but I don't know if you know this, local TV markets are collapsing right now. And so that, that I don't know if you guys know how bad that is for Major League Baseball going forward. That was the thing that kept them afloat. And this is one of the reasons, because baseball sticks with gentlemen's rules way longer than they should. I mean, for those who don't know history, the gentleman's rule in baseball entering the 1920s was – you shouldn't be trying to hit home runs. You should, you should be a small ball team. That's how you win baseball games. And Babe Ruth comes in and says, "Heff that. I'm swinging as hard as I can at every pitch. Well, you say, oops, I hit a home run. My bad. Yeah, you were. It was. Well, the, the theory was that small ball wins championships. Just like, you know, with Michael Jordan in the 80s, the theory was scoring champions don't win championships. Centers win championships, not scoring right. guards. And then Jordan just was like, yeah, I don't believe that. And and Babe Ruth saved baseball by really being – yeah, he really was the first player to actually – the reason Ruth dominated home runs relative to the rest of the league at the time was he was the only player that actually tried for home runs, if that makes sense. Love it. Did not know that. I know that they didn't have a fence for a long time. They just had a big, huge field. And can you imagine an outfielder uh, having to cover just like a 450-foot fence and be out there and – um <clears throat> that sounds absolutely horrible. Zul Beer, XULBeer.com. That's the official craft beer of Off the Hook Sports. Some Off the Hook Sports sent you, and you will love it in downtown Knoxville. They've got parking, believe it or not, at uh, Zul Beer, XULBeer.com. Worldwide award winning craft beer. So at the end of the day, based off four downs, 
we've come to this conclusion that Tony Vitello needs to and will tone it down just a little bit. Is that I'm asking you, is that where we are? Are we both on the same page? If last year was a 10, okay, and when you get when you get an assistant coach thrown out of was it the regional or super regional last year? Um, when when you get a coach thrown out of of playoff time, you, you're at about a 10 or 11 on my scale. That's a little too far. You're right. You know what we are right now? Okay, here's a reference. You've seen Happy Gilmore, right? I have. When Julie Bowen's character, his love interest, um, comes to him and was like, you can still have fun. You just got to dial it back a little bit. You know, no throwing exactly. clubs, no swearing, no hitting other players. <laughs> no, that's exactly what it is. So I think yeah. that Tony Vitello, can he still have that appeal, though? as the second happy Gilmore that is slightly dialed down. I think he can't. I think he needs to grow the beard back. I've ta- I don't judge on this, but I've talked to a lot of females who think the beard needs to come back. Okay. Well, maybe his, maybe that's, is he, is he married? I believe so. Well, maybe that's why he shaved the beard. Maybe his wife is tired of the females coming after him. <laughs> You can tell pretty quickly because I tried the beard thing from Christmas to late January. You can tell pretty quickly if it works or not. Mine did not because it was white, but Caleb's rocking the beard. But it's it's an individual choice, and you're able to look at it. I will say this: uh, I think the I think he the beard works for him. I would go back to the beard. I agree. I agree. He does have a baby face, though. I mean, I've noticed that <laughs> without it. <laughs> Whatever it is, the ladies love it. Um, so there you go. We think Tony Vitello dials it down a Lady little bit. LLTV. What is that? Instead of LL Cool J, LLTV. Ladies love Tony Vitello. They do. They do. And it's really, really over the top. There's even earrings nowadays that you can that have Tony Vitello's face on them that you can wear. Out wow, that's great. 